I'm going to show you how to make DOSBox sound better. There were several different sound cards used on PCs in the DOS era. I'm going to go over some of the more popular ones in this video series. The first of these is the PC speaker. It was the original sound output on the IBM PC, dating back to the first PC. It was something of an afterthought, as the PC was meant for business applications and not games. Its original purpose was to relay BIOS beep codes. It produced sound with square wave synthesis. When it played, it sounded like this. Pretty bad, right? It looks pretty bad, too. This is a picture of the waveform of that audio clip. You can see how boxy the sound wave is due to the square waves. However, that isn't the only trick the PC speaker has up its sleeve. The PC speaker can play digital PCM sound. This capability wasn't used in too many games, and it was rather poor sounding. Message from Sensor contact. Target to audio in bottom pie. Button 45. Mark 125. Internal hot damage. Duck 25. Internal hot damage. Duck 29. Helm malfunction. It doesn't sound like much, but it was pretty impressive at the time. If a game has any other sound option, you should use the other option. The next sound option is AdLib or Sound Blaster. Almost every DOS game from the end of the 80s on has this as an option. The AdLib was specifically designed as a sound card for game music. The Sound Blaster, which was released later than the AdLib, had the same music chip, and was back compatible with any games using the AdLib. It used a Yamaha OPL frequency modulation synthesis chip. FM synthesis was used in many professional synthesizers during the 80s, and so, needless to say, it sounded pretty good. FM synthesis has a far more complicated sound, as you can see here. The Sound Blaster could also output digital PCM sound in either 8-bit or 16-bit, depending on the model. You should always have Sound Blaster turned on in DOSBox, otherwise you won't hear any speech in most games that have it. Last of the earlier DOS sound systems was MT32 MIDI. It was a popular sound option for games up to around 1993 or so, and was almost always the best choice. The Roland MT32 was sold as either an external synthesizer or an internal expansion card. It used an early version of MIDI to transmit the sound data to it. Each instrument that the MT32 could play was stored as a PCM sample and modified by linear arithmetic synthesis.
It could also modify sounds in ways that later general MIDI synthesizers were unable to due to the earlier MIDI standard it used. Compared to the Sound Blaster, it sounded like an orchestra was coming out of your computer. The waveform here is even more complicated than the FM Synthesis one. It also has actual stereo separation. If you want to use it in DOSBox, you'll need to emulate it, but MT32 emulation is not included in official or even many unofficial builds. The answer to this is the external MT32 driver, MUNT. To start installing MUNT, you first need to go to the MUNT project website. Then you download it. Double click here. Go to ROM configuration. I'm not going to tell you where to get the ROMs for this, but the default directory you put them in is ROMs in your user folder. To set it up, go to MIDI, click the Select MIDI Device from Device Manager button, now select MT32 Synth Emulator from the list, then hit OK and you're almost done. Run the setup or install program for the game. Finally, select Roland MT32 or LAPC1 from the sound options for your game. See you in part two of this series, which will be about general MIDI sound.